Hi everyone, this is Linda, and for those of you that belong to the Husqvarna Viking Epic Owners Group, and that's for those people that actually own Epics, um, you probably saw my card I posted on that page, but this is the video that I'm going to do with just my Linda Stitch and stuff. So this is actually the card we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make this, and it's going to be using just our machine with the leaves actually come over from the Premiere Plus software. I'm going to do another video that lets you actually create everything in the software. It's not exact, but it's pretty daggone close. Um, for those of you that have the software, but maybe not have the designs that allow us to do these little points at us. So here we go. So supply list. Um, first off in the Epic and the Epic 2. Epic design number is B26. The Epic 2 is B56. In the Brilliance 80, it's B26. Now I don't have access to the sampler book for the Sapphire 85, but I'm sure it's probably in there too. Um, but you would need one of those machines in order to do what we're going to do because we're going to do some resizing and scaling and those kinds of things. Other things you need. Some sequence. Now, I know that normally the sequence tells you to use um, those flat sequence, but I'm going. To, we're going to actually use this just the, the regular sequence. So um, you can do it either way. Then the, the other thing you're going to need, let's go my, through my list, stabilizer. You can have a couple of different choices. The first one is you want to use a piece of aqua magic, and the aqua magic is what we're going to sew the point set is onto. Um, you could use um, a cutaway and this is actually a stitch point cutaway and it just basically will be on the back of the card and it will stay with the card. You could also use the light and tacky tear away and this actually would attach to the back of your hoop. Um, I have a piece of just red and it's basically it's a red and if you look at one side it looks a little bit different. Um, it's just a piece of rayon uh, kind of a silky kind of rayon. You could use organza, you could use anything along those lines, but I wanted it to be real flimsy once I washed out the stabilizer. Uh, I have the 80 by 80 hoop, which is the size we're going to try and use. I have the 100 by 100 hoop. If you don't have an 80 by 80, you can use the 100 by 100 hoop. The other hoop I like to use is the 100 by 100 metal hoop. And if you have that, that's great. If you don't, you can still use one of the other hoops. So then I, the other thing you need is you're going to need some cardstock. And the one piece that you're going to put the poinsettias themselves on is a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's basically taking a piece of cardstock and cutting it into a fourth. Then this is the piece that we're going to actually attach everything to. This way, by attaching onto here, you actually hide all the stitches. So that one is five and a half by eight and a half. So any kind of cardstock that you have, you can cut that down to be what you need. The thread colors, I used a red and white um, variegated for sewing the actual poinsettias just because I thought it would give it a little bit of texture. I have a gold for sewing on the sequence and then a green in order to sew the leaves. So that's kind of what you want to do there. I do have a marking pen to help me mark things, a glue stick. This is going to be important because it's going to make life, your life a whole lot easier by having that. I have two-sided uh, tape. Uh, it makes it easier. You can still use the glue stick for certain things. I have a rotary cutter that's got the pinking shears, pinking blade on it. You can also use uh, your pinking shears. Then my soldering iron. I know that sounds weird, and why would you use a soldering iron? But believe me, it makes it a whole lot nicer for cleaning up the very edges of all your poinsettias. So let's get started and actually pull everything up in the machine. And I'm going to be using the original Epic to do this. So those with the Epic 2, you just have to know what your icons are. They're going to be a little bit different. But I tend to use the Epic 2 a lot, and I thought I better do this one on the Epic so you can actually see this um, on one of the other machines. Of um, My Epic is already set up to do embroidery. I've gone through and I've calibrated my embroidery arm. I have actually hooped uh, 
piece of the water soluble aqua magic stabilizer with my red organza or it's kind of a more of a rayon -y kind of it's a real silky kind of fabric um in my 80 by 80 hoop and i like to hoop the this kind of stuff because it is so flimsy and it just likes to tend to move and I want to make sure that this doesn't move while I'm doing the sewing. Most of the time I do lay things up on top, but I'm going to I have this all hooped so I'm ready to go. So on the original Epic, it is B26. So the one I want is this particular one here. So I'm going to hold that down. And I'm going to move it into the hoop. Now, it did automatically come up with the 80 by 80 hoop. And I need three of those. So I'm just going to kind of move that off there. And I'm going to duplicate it. So to duplicate, I need to go come into the little accessory thing here and hit duplicate. On the origin, on the Epic 2, it's actually down here. So I'm going to move him up here. And I'm going to add another one. And I need to duplicate. So I have three of them. And I'm actually going to take, oops. I want them each to be kind of outside of the hoop area just so that what I can do is come down here and I'm going to actually select the um, move into hoop and all three of them will move into the hoop just so that they are literally just inside because I need to fit those other three pieces that are smaller than that in here. So I'm going to duplicate this again. So I'm going to hit duplicate. And again, on the Epic 2, some of these are down here and not actually in the little accessory box here. And I'm going to actually, okay, so with the fourth one added, I'm going to actually go into scaling. And scaling, what it's going to do is it's going to, I'm going to reduce the size by 20%, which is the max you can do. It's not going to change my number of stitches, but for this particular process, it's not that big a deal. If I tried to do resize, it distorts all my stitches and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to select the scaling which is it looks like three little pieces of paper and I'm going to decrease it as much as I possibly can and I want to make sure that this is locked so make sure that that actually has the little closed lock here because if it doesn't it's only going to reduce this one side at a time and I need to make sure that all sides are going down at the same time and I can just take this and I'm going to make it as small as it it's only going to let me go down the 20% so that's what I need so now I can actually move this one kind of up in here or wherever it's going to fit and I'm going to duplicate that one and I'm going to duplicate it again and you may have to play with these a little bit to fit them in the 80 by 80 hoop. So that's why it's kind of nice to use the 100 by 100 hoop. It gives you a little bit more room to play. Um, I'm going to move this over here just a little bit. And again, I can use that, move it into the hoop to make things work. And I can actually rotate these just a little bit. Um, gives me a little bit more room. And I'm going to move until these all fit in my 80 by 80 hoop. So give me a sec. Okay, so I have them all placed so that they are all inside the hoop. And you know that they are all inside the hoop because the little icon that says move into hoop is not lit. If it was this, so if one of these was actually outside of the sewing area of the hoop, all I'd have to do is hit that little icon and it moves it back in. Again, in the Epic 2, it's down here. So it is a little bit different. But I actually fit all six of the poinsettia pieces that I'm going to be using all in one hoop in the 80 by 80. The 100 by 100 gives you a little bit more room. Sometimes you have to rotate them a little bit and move them around. So I'm actually going to so stitch these out and I'll be right back. The other thing I do, I forgot to mention, is when I come in to get ready to sew these out, I actually go to monochrome because I just want it to all sew all at one time. I use white bobbin thread. It's not going to be that big a deal. It's not going to be seen a whole lot. Now, if you were using something besides like this red, and I remember I'm using that red and white kind of variegated kind of thread, so it's not going to stand out terribly much. If you wanted to match your top thread and your bottom thread, you could do that too. But I'm just going to go make sure that's all monochrome and it's all going to sew at one time. Okay, so I have this all stitched out. It took about six minutes, maybe seven minutes. and. I'm all set and I'm going to take this and I'll take this all out of the hoop. And if you notice, they are all done. There's three of the larger, and believe me, they're not very big, and then three of the smaller. So I'm going to take this all out and then I'm going to cut this all apart. And then I will throw this into some water and actually uh, get rid of the water soluble stabilizer. So what I like to use is these are. Um, 
and spiral um, scissors. I forgot to put that in the supply list, but they cut so nicely. Now you just want to get close because we're going to use that soldering iron to actually get rid of the real excess. And when I get that all done, I will be back. I know y'all thought I was crazy when I said something about a soldering iron when I'm doing embroidery. What this lets me do is once I've cut everything out and run it through the water and got rid of all the aqua magic off the back, I can actually, because this is a very lightweight fabric and it's um, almost kind of burns, so organza does the same kind of thing, and I can actually take that soldering iron and get really, really pretty close. So I've kind of done these, and so it's really pretty close. Uh, this one I, ha I had cut out, but I need to get really close into those stitches. See where the stitch, it's hard to see, I know the stitches. Um, I want to get really close into those stitches. So to do this, I have a soldering iron and it's really hot, so be very careful. This is just a pet piece of ceramic tile that I picked up at a garage sale someplace along the line. They wanted to sell me the whole stack of them and all I wanted was one. So I got it for like a quarter. <laughs> it was, it just worked for me. Um, it actually started when I was doing wood burning. But, so I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm going to kind of stand it straight up and down. And this is going to be kind of hard to see. I'm going to do my best I can to show you. Um, but I'm going to actually just take this and I'm going to follow right along the outside edge of those stitches. But if you have it straight up and down, you're getting that tip really close. And then just keep going all the way around. And sometimes I end up burning it a little bit, but that's okay because that just makes the edge a little bit more distinct. So I'm going to continue doing those and get all six of mine done and then we'll move to the next step. So I need to clear my workspace and my workspace has all these flowers on it and I need to get rid of that so you can on the epic 2 the little trash can is down here but in this one I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to hold this down see that little triangle there that tells me that there is additional steps in here so I'm going to hold this down and it's going to say mm, I want to get rid of everything now I could have saved this but I'm not going to so I'm going to delete all and everything's gone. Now the leaves I used for this particular design is actually found in the Premiere Plus 2 Super Designs. I couldn't find anything that was actually built into my Epix that I could use. Now there may be something you might use, but what I did is I went to the Super Designs in Premiere Plus 2 and went in the wreath category and I picked on the leaves with the two little pieces. Now I'm actually going to send that directly from my software directly over to my machine and it's going to show up over there and I'm going to say yep I want it and there it is. Now I need to change the hoop and I'm going to actually come down and I'm going to come down into the 80 by 80 hoop again. Or you could use the 100 by 100, but the 80 by 80 gives me how, what I need to know. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. Keep on going here. And I really want those stems so that they kind of are coming to the bottom. The other thing I need to do is I'm going to kind of fool this into thinking I've changed the density. And to do that, you do it a couple of different ways. You could do it in the software, which probably makes more sense. but you know, you could do this with any of your other designs. Now remember, scaling actually increases or decreases the design without changing your number of stitches. Resize actually does just the opposite. So if I make it larger, it's going to increase my number of stitches. So to kind of fool it into thinking I'm going to change the density, what I want to do is I'm going to make this design because I really want it this particular size. I need to make note of the size of my design. Sorry. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make it, it's 24.5 and 20.9. And I want to make a note of that someplace so I remember what that is so that when I make my next step changes, I'll know what to do. All right, so I'm going to scale this up as large as I can. So again, like we've done before, is I'm going to actually take this and I'm going to scale it all the way up. See how it kind of thinned out 
my stitches. But what I need to do is I really want it the other size. So I'm going to go into um, resize in order to do that. Now on the Epic 2, it's in a different place than on the Epic, but it's along the bottom. The Epic 2 is actually around the, along the bottom. See the little three, there's three little flowers here and one smaller medium size. And I'm going to take that design and it's going to bring me into another screen. So now what I want to do is I actually want to tell it, I want to come back down to those sizes. So it's going to think about how large this design is and it's going to look at the number of stitches and I'm going to make it smaller. So it's going to adjust the number of stitches. So there's fewer stitches. So to do that, I'm going to come in here where it says 29.4 and I want that to be 24.5. And it kind of made this really close. So instead of 20.9, it's 20.8. That's close enough for us. So we're going to do okay. And now our design is not quite as dense. Now the next thing I want to do is I actually want three of these. So I want to make sure that's selected and on the Epic 2 it's in a different spot so you'll just have to know where those things are. And we're actually going to go into design shaping and design shaping is a little star here on the original. And I want three repeats. Oops, I messed that up didn't I? I need to tell it I'm going to go in a circle. And the other thing I want to do is, so I want to go one, two, three, and it's really not quite the way I want it. So I'm going to actually mess with this a little bit and I can actually, oh, but let me shut that so you can see what I'm doing. I actually selected this and I kind of want those stems to kind of be towards the center. And because I'm using the 80 by 80 hoop, I need to make sure that my whole design is actually going to be inside the hoop. If you look, I actually have a red box around there. So if I have, and if I move this in just a little bit, oops, you notice the red box now goes away, which is good. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I can still mess with these just a little bit and I'm going to go individually. So I'm going to come in here where the toolbox is and I'm going to separate these so that they're no longer grouped together. They're individual. So now I can actually pick on each individual one. So let's pick on the one that looks like this. Whoops wrong one. And I actually want to turn it just a little bit and maybe even move it in just a little bit, but I can actually mess with these individually now to be closer to what I want. Now I also could take and flip them so that they're not all going the same way, but the only thing you want to make sure of is that everything is actually in the hoop and it is because see that little um, hoop with the little flower is not lit. So that's about what I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my 80 by 80 hoop and you could use the 100 by 100 hoop or you could use the 100 by 100 metal hoop. So you could do a couple of different things. Um, in fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'll use the 100 by 100 metal hoop so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to change this to the 100 by 100 metal and then I'm going to take and I'm going to put um, the sticky back stabilizer on the tearaway stabilizer on the back of that and that's that light and tacky tearaway so it's not terribly heavy um, and then I'm going to pe put my piece of cardstock on top of that and actually sew these out so give me a sec okay so I have my 100 by 100 okay so I have my 100 by 100 hoop and it's the metal hoop and I use the light and tacky stabilizer on the back side of it I flip this over it doesn't always hold as tight as I want it's going to show the blue painters tape on the back side and if you can hear the other part of the recording I'm sorry I can't figure out how to get rid of that um, so now I'm ready to put the piece of cardstock on and if I line the cardstock up to the very bottom part of the hoop, it's not going to be where I need it to be. I need to move it again. So I need to kind of center it based on the little markings in my hoop. So I'm going to move it down a little bit. And you could use your marker in order to mark it so that you actually are in the right spot. Okay, I have my machine set with green thread and I'm ready to go. And then we'll do the next step. 
Okay, so I now have my three little leaves set up and they're all ready to go for my next step. So when I get ready to do this, I'm actually going to take each of these wonderful little red flowers and I'm going to actually take and I'm going to glue them with my glue stick so that I end up with something like this. It will make it a whole lot easier when I get ready to sew that out. So you see it's kind of, so my points are coming out to the outside edges and then I can kind of place them where I want them. And then I'll go into sewing mode and actually use a sequence stitch to actually attach them all. So hang on a second. So just in case you, so to glue, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take my one of my larger ones and I'm gonna take one of my smaller petals and I'm actually going to take and I wanna glue those together so that they don't shift on me when I go to add my sequence and add them to the card. So to do that, I'm just gonna take, there's my larger one, I'm just gonna set it there. I'll take the glue stick, just put a little bit of dab on the back and then attach the two of them together and you do want it to kind of dry just a little bit because you don't want your needle sticking to it. Now one of the questions I always get when I'm embroidering on cardstock is what size needle do I use? Okay, I like a 75 or an 80 needle. Uh, that way you don't get as, you don't get the large huge holes, but I tend to use older needles so I will go into my use needles stash and actually use those because it's cardstock. It's like cutting paper with regular scissors. You don't want to use your sewing scissors on regular paper. So that's kind of what I do. Use is the same on the Epic 2 as it is on the original Epic. And it's, so what I did is I actually lower, I'm again, I'm using stitch number L70 and I lowered my needle so that it is actually in place and I'm going to lower my presser foot so that it's nice and tight down on the here and then I'm going to kind of I just have an old needle that I'm going to use and I'm kind of going to hold help hold that in place I don't want to use my finger and I'm going to just start to sew and it's going to do a little knot first and it's going to go over and again, I'm not using the fat, flat sequence. That is what they tell you to use just because that's what I happen to have. And I think if I dug through my box of sequence, um, it would find it. So keeping my foot on the foot pedal until it actually stops, it will have done its little knot part that it needed to do. And I'm not going to try and cut the threads at this point. I'm just going to raise this and I'm going to move to the next one. So I'm going to again, a stylus or a pen you could actually use that too I'm just using a little old an old needle and I'm going to kind of hold that in place and I'm going to kind of so I'm going to go and try and move that into place someplace right in there and again I didn't cut my threads I just kind of I'm going to go and I'm going to move this back in and I'm going to hold that in if you wanted to use a little bit of glue you could actually do that I'm going to lower my um, needle in so that it actually is in the hole of that sequence. Oops, I know that's kind of hard to see. And then I'm going to lower my presser foot. I'm going to kind of help that stay in place. It's going to tie its knot. Go over. Keeping my foot on that foot pedal until it actually stops is really important. Okay, again, I'm gonna raise my, I'm not going to cut it. I will cut those all afterwards, just so that I have them all done at the same time. So now again, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put my little sequence. I don't know if you can see that real well, but see, I've got my sequence and I'm just gonna lay it right in there. And I'm gonna lay my poinsettia in the next spot. I might not, again, using my, that little stylus or needle or whatever it is that you need to use. And I want to lower my needle so that it actually falls into the hole. Okay. And I'm going to hold it kind of in place. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And then again, I'm going to kind of hold, I'll try and do this with my other hand here. I'm going to kind of hold that in place because I need it to not move on me with my foot pedal and I am not going fast. I'm going actually kind of on the slow speed just because I have better control and there I am. So I'm all done 
and I'm going to raise my presser foot and I'm going to hit my scissors cut my thread See how this is kind of looking like it's cut it away but as soon as you lay that on the um, other piece of cardstock all that kind of goes away you see I, it looks like it's cutting things away but it's going to be perfectly fine Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut some of this away. So I'm going to cut around here. Now I, that's what I like about these uh, particular um, rotary blade with the pinking shears. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my straight edge and I'm going to go in about a quarter inch or this is going to be basically on your what you think you want to do. So I'm going to actually cut those away and then we'll do the next step. So I have actually um, created my little card here and so now I'm going to take my green piece that's here and all I have to do is and I could pick uh, glue in a piece of white and do whatever I could actually um, go and if I wanted to do this kind of like this I could take my sewing machine stitches and actually put in Merry Christmas but I think adding any more to that is going to make it not quite as pretty. So using that two-sided tape, and again, remember we have that sticky stabilizer on the back. I'm just going to lay a couple of pieces of the um, two-sided sticky tape, sorry about the strings, and actually attach it there. And I always initial on the back, I put in my initials, and then I actually put in the year that this was sent. So I hope to see some samples, thanks.